This is our second session on Mark 8, 34 to 38, one of the most important passages on the nature of Christian discipleship. Last time we focused on the content of Jesus' command, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, and talked about what it means to take up a cross, what it means to deny ourselves. And we noticed last time how this whole text is structured, namely that there's a command, and then there are four arguments. One, two, three, four. Four ways that Jesus intends to motivate and strengthen us for the obedience of this horrific requirement of cross-dying, cross-suffering, cross-shaming, cross-bearing. And today we're going to deal with just this one. So, Father, as we take up now this first argument that Jesus gives for why we should follow him, why we should deny ourselves, why we should take a cross, open our eyes to see the glory of the incentive, the glory of the motive, so that we are empowered to do this this hard work of following the narrow way that leads to life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And we said that cross-bearing signifies willingness to embrace opposition, probably official, willingness to embrace shame, People were stripped and hung up on a cross in a horrible way. Suffering. It was painful to the max to have nails driven through your hands and feet. And you die. This suffering has no happy ending on earth. You die. So that's what it means. You're going you're gonna to take up a cross and follow me. You must be ready for my sake and the gospels to endure opposition, shame, suffering, and die. Now here comes, here comes the motive, the power. Four, whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. So there is Save, leading to lose, right? Whoever would save will lose. So save leads to lose. And whoever loses his life, for my sake, and it will save it. So there's, there's losing, lose life, leading to save. What does this first save mean? Whoever would save his life will lose it because that's what we want to avoid, right? We don't want to lose our lives. That's the way Jesus is arguing. You don't want to lose your life, so don't save it. (laughs) That's the way he's arguing. Whoever would save his life will lose it, so don't save it, so you won't lose it. Well, what does save mean? Save means I'm going to avoid opposition. I'm going to avoid shame. I'm going to avoid suffering. I'm going to avoid dying. That's what save means. Or you could put it more positively. I'm going to, what would be the opposite of each of these? I'm going to pursue acceptance, not opposition. I'm going to pursue glory, not shame. I'm going to pursue uh, comfort, not suffering, and I'm going to pursue safety, not death. So that's save. A life devoted to being accepted, getting earthly glory, avoiding all suffering and having as much comfort as you can, and being as safe as you can and not putting yourself in any risk, that's saving your life. Result, lose it. Meaning what? Forever. Right? 
Look at, look at this. Here's a parallel statement in John 12, 25. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life, so it looks like you hate it because you're enduring so much. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it, keep it, be saved for eternal life. So this is eternal. So when Mark says, when Jesus says in Mark, whoever would save his life, love his life in this world, will lose it. It means forever. So don't lose it. Therefore, don't save it. And he puts it another way. Whoever would, whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. So this losing leads to saving. So what is this losing involved? Surely this losing is this self-denial and this cross. To lose life means accept opposition, accept shame, accept suffering, accept death. And when, when the old self, old self, says, no, I don't want to be opposed and shamed and suffer and die, then the new self says, well, I deny you. You don't get your way. I want to be saved. And therefore, I am not going to let you say no to losses. I will embrace losses. Whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. So this losing here is this self-denial and this cross-bearing. And notice, it is not whimsical or willy-nilly. You don't go out looking for suffering. You don't embrace uh, opposition, shame, and suffering for nothing. It's for, for, for Christ's sake, for the gospel's sake. Notice back here in the full chapter, it talks about whoever is ashamed of me and my words. So that's the same as my sake and the gospel's. So, the losing here is the embrace of opposition, shame, suffering, and death. And the saving here is forever. This is eternal life. So, if you decide you're going to devote your life to being accepted by people, getting all the earthly glory you can, having as much comfort as you can, being as safe as you can, you won't have eternal life. But if for Christ's sake, not your own whimsical ideas of what it involves, for Christ's sake, you embrace the cross, then you will save yourself forever. And clearly then you can see there is no such thing as ultimate self-denial. There is an old self, the self that will not do this, the self that must do this. That old self must be denied. But there is a self, there is a you who is saying no to this old self. And that self will be saved. And Jesus wants it to be saved. It's an, an incentive that preachers have used ever since the beginning. Here's Peter preaching in Acts 2. Uh, verse 40, and with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So it would be folly to say that self-denial here means you don't want to be saved. You want to deny the self that thinks it can only seek salvation through acceptance and glory and comfort and safety. But you know better through opposition and shame and suffering and death for Jesus' sake and for the Gospels, you will have eternal life and that self will not be denied. It will have its eternal joy in God's presence forever.